Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. We are on the clock today. Don has a big business meeting. Ian has got no battery left. And Stevie's got a shepherd's pie in the oven. So let's go for it. Uh, was this a nightmare draw for Chelsea because they got Atletico Madrid, Stevie? A hundred percent an absolute nightmare draw for them. Don. Now, oh. if they play the Atletico, if, if they play the Atletico Madrid, they played at the weekend, they'll be all right. But somehow I don't think that'll happen in the Champions League. Don, as your maths is super good, <laughs> this could be interesting. Oh, no. what percent... I tell you what, you only can when you said you were in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> what, but the boys have already talked about the Champions League on the show. Sorry, did you want to say something else? No. Okay. Don, as your maths is super good, what percent chance will you give to Juventus winning the Champions League? Nice and easy. Zero. Wow. Zero. <laughs> who's, who's your favourite, Don, to win the Champions League? Uh, my favourite is Bayern. And what, per by what percentage City. do you give Bayern Munich? What? What percentage are they to win the Champions League, in your opinion? Oh, stop it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. 25%. Oh, that's all right. That's okay. Um, uh, Don, should Arsenal sign Papu Gomez now that he is uh, falling out with Atalanta and likely to leave in January? I mean, he'd be a great signing. I mean, he is a proper number 10. Um, whether he leaves Italy or not, I don't know. Uh, there is a problem between him and Gasparini. That's for sure. Um, but I think he'd be great in the Premier League. A real wizard. Ian, what's happened to Sheffield United this year? They're doing worse than ever. Uh, oh, sorry, they're doing worse than even Arsenal. Uh, can they stay up? Uh, no, they can't. I think, yeah, going back to the maths again, <laughs> um, they've only got one point from 12 games. So you're going to need 35 at least to stay up. That means they need another 34 points from somewhere in the remaining games. Now, I think they've lost a bit of their intensity. Something doesn't seem right about them. They're not the team they were last season. And I'm afraid they are, they are doomed. Stevie, what was it like in the dressing room when a new manager was appointed mid-season? What did players try and do to impress the new gaffer? <laughs> well, everybody obviously ran a little Stevie, quicker you and a little further. Stevie, are you itching your leg? What are you doing? Tried... I am, yeah. I don't don't I itch your leg when you're talking to us. Yes, I was itching my leg. I'm sorry. All right. All right, sure. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, as I was it's saying... Your shoulder! <laughs> yeah, no, the best... The, the one... The best thing... The best thing is everybody's, <laughs> everybody's thinking the same thing. Is this guy going to be all right or is he going to be a bit of a chirp? And is he going to like me or is he not going to like me? That's that's kind of where they all start off, but certainly in training, everybody tried, tries a little harder, shall we say, to make it simple and i imagine stevie there are certain people that you could pinpoint already and you're like right they're going to be trying to show off to to the new coach yeah it was you <laughs> well anybody who wasn't playing for the start right was going to be kissing the new manager's backside at every <laughs> at every tub that was the, again that's the only thing you can guarantee don what was it like and and of course hey and of course oh. The ones that, had the, that may have had previous with the manager elsewhere were either smiling or weren't very happy at all. I bet. Depending on the, uh, <laughs> the last interaction. Uh, Don? Uh, yeah, I mean, I remember leaving Sheffield United to join Howard Kendall for the second time. He brought me to Sheffield and then took me to Everton. So you sort of like, you arrive there thinking you're a little bit golden. Um, you're the sort of manager's son uh, and you know you're going to be okay. What Stevie's talking about is 100% right. The reason why managers normally get brought in because the last one had a stinker, um, so he couldn't get any wins. So all of, all of a sudden, the ones who were in the reserves, who weren't getting a first-team game, bounced out onto the training ground looking like a million dollars, got loads of intensity, you know, working their backsides off to try and impress the new manager. And then you realise after a couple of weeks, he still doesn't like you. And then you go back to how you were. Don, have you ever scored an own goal? And if so, did it have an effect in the game or a season as a whole? I scored a goal, uh, an own goal for... Uh, I was playing for Sunderland at the time. I went back to Goodison on the last day of the season. Um, and I scored an own goal. And I wasn't particularly well. And I got uh, sent off with about 20 minutes to go. So that was a torrid game for me. But wow. the, the beauty of that was, going back to Goodison, I got a standing ovation as I went off the pitch from the Evertonians. 
Oh. That was amazing. Well, what about Sunderland? They're the ones paying your wages. Well, I got sent off. I got sent off and scored an own goal. I didn't mean it. <laughs> well, it sounds like you did. Sounds like you're happy to get your starting ovation from the Everton fan. No, there was nothing on the game. It was one of them, one of them sort of meaningless games at the end of the season. There was, there was nothing on it. Were you hungover? Was that where you were sick? What was the problem? No, I was the next day because we flew to Magaluf the next day with Peter Reid. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, Ian, we'll start with you. If you have the power to change a current rule or implement a new one in today's game, what would it be? And Stevie, why would yours be to abolish throwing coaches? <laughs> uh, Ian, what, Ian, what would you do? What would you change? I, I, I would change the offside law or the VAR application of it. And I would say this. I would say if you look at the, the picture, the VAR looks at the picture. If he can't see with the naked eye whether it's offside or not, then you go with the on-field decision. You do not put in the lines. Don? Totally agree. I've been saying that for ages, Dan. With, once you put the lines across the offside... Yeah, but sometimes um, the angles can be a bit misleading, can't they? Offside. Just that, that the angles can be a bit misleading. If you've got the technology there, why wouldn't you use it? You no, haven't got I the think, technology because there, I think though, either way, you don't I mean, know when the ball was we've... last played. You don't know when the ball was last played because they, they can't... They haven't got the, the, the frames in, in the camera to work out the exact millisecond, but they're telling you at the other end, when it's offside, that by the thinness of the badge on the shirt. It, it's yeah, a it's funny. It's scientific it's, it's funny. But Some people's it's, eyes are different to others, though, aren't they? Some people see one way, some way people see another. So, so no, but just take the lines off, take the lines off, and then if you look at someone, i.e. Sadio Mane, and you go, yeah, he's a yard offside, he's offside. If you go, yeah, he's a yard offside, he's offside. If it's ridiculously tight with no lines on the pitch, play on. But how tight is tight? Something that you can't see. Because as, as Ian said, the, the, we don't know because you know I think, the, I think they run the frames at something like 28 frames per second. So we've had hundreds of offsides. I've not seen one yet that's gone actually bang level. It's always either offside or onside. But it's something that's... Why would you change something that we can have a, a objective to being subjective? Because it's not factual. But it's more factual than your eyes. Look at the state of your eyes. Don't you leave the, it. Why, why have you just been lazy? Exactly. Don. What about my someone who doesn't have their eyes lazy? Can't see a thing. No, my uh, eyes are good. Don, don't get involved with him. <laughs> He's naughty, isn't he? What's wrong, Don't Stevie? get involved with them. Take the lines off. What's wrong? Well, you when you're in, when you're on this line of questioning, you don't get involved with you because it doesn't matter what Don says, whether he's right or wrong. You're going to come out your wee smarty pants stuff again. So, Don, <laughs> leave it. Where do you stand on this, Stephen, and the lines? <laughs> I, will, I will refrain from getting involved with your nonsense, Thomas. That's what I'll do. What do you mean? It's not nonsense. What's the nonsense bit? Well, because no matter what I'm going to say, you're going to try and be clever. I won't be clever. I will. I, give me your answer and I'll move on to the next question, I promise. Well, cause, well we know that already, aye. We know that already. Right, go on. Answer the question, I'll move, then move on. I love VAR. I love the offside rule. If you're going to have to use lines, then you use lines. And if they're off, they're off. How's that? So you agree with me, Steve? Uh... <laughs> Dan, we know a lot about the others, but which clubs did you support or used to support as a kid, except for Real Madrid? Did you burn the bridges at Madrid and now support Barcelona and Atleti? Um, I still very much like Real Madrid. I like Southampton as well, and I like England. Uh, Stevie, describe playing against John Barnes in training. Uh, I don't think I ever did. I always made sure I got on his team. That's, <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> That's a great answer. <laughs> Did you know, Stevie, when he moved from Oxford that he was special? Oxford? Oh, Watford, sorry. sorry. Uh, Watford. Watford. <laughs> uh, One of those yellow Oxford. teams. So, uh, as, as, soon as, he, as soon as he stepped on the field, um, listen, I was lucky. I played behind him. I played left back behind him. So I got the best view of anybody. And, I mean, you talk about somebody that had everything. Um, it was just a joy to sit and watch him. Hey, run past people, drop a shoulder and go past people, dribble past people, score goals, you name it. 
challenge people, by the way. He could tackle as well. So, yeah. No, Bonzi was fantastic. Could do everything. Brilliant. Ian, what's the biggest difference between boxing and football commentary? Well, there are there are now, and they want to have five substitutes again in the Premier League. There are well, there are thirty six players to research for football every week, plus all the uh, the many many interpretations of the laws. So football football is a lot harder. You've got the identification problem. You don't generally have that problem in boxing. When I used to commentate on boxing, of course, you don't know the score. So you have to give people some idea who you think might be winning. So you better not be too far off with that. Do you have a preference, Ian? Which sport? Oh, football for, for sure. Oh, really? I played football. Ever since I was, oh yeah, I played football since I was a kid and, and and watched it every week since. So yeah, commentating on football is a is a dream for me since I'm nowhere near good enough to have played it at the level of the two esteemed gentlemen uh, who are sharing the couch tonight. Is, well, not going to Stevie during the show about Dawn. Uh, yeah. What does Dan and Ian think about Stevie's worst nightmare? His worst nightmare, of course, is England lifting another World Cup. And does Don share the same sentiment? Uh, let's start with you, Don, because are you as anti-English as Stevie? Yeah, I sort of am. I mean, I might be a little bit more diluted than Stevie's hatred and Craig's hatred, but I am. You know, my dad was a massive Rangers fan, so he drummed into me very early on that he never wanted England to win a World Cup or Euros or anything. So, stick it over to Stevie, let him go all in, let him go two-footed. Oh, no, we know Stevie. Stevie said his worst nightmare is England lifting the World Cup. But, oh, Ian, if Scotland, which obviously they won't, if that if they did that, we wouldn't mind, would we? No, we really wouldn't. I don't get that. I mean, going back to that, that story about Dennis Law going out to play golf rather than watch England win the World Cup in, in 1966. I can honestly say that I was celebrating very hard when Scotland qualified for the European Championships. It was fantastic the other week. So, uh, yeah, that, that's not reciprocated. But I do remember when Alf Ramsey was the, the manager of England, uh, the, the World Cup winning manager, going to, to Scotland and getting off the plane. And there was a gentleman from the Scottish FA greeting him on the tarmac at the airport and said, well, welcome to Scotland, <laughs> Alf. <laughs> he said, "You must." I'll, I'll miss out the expletive. He said, you must be joking. <laughs> so, not, it's always going to be a grudge match it's great, and it's great that they're playing each other at the Euros I don't understand your hatred Stevie <laughs> how long have you got I'll give you a look I'll tell you what any stop scratching now that I'm at... oh. well I just get comfortable Dan you know what I mean <laughs> yeah I don't know what I told you before but I used to... when I think about it now because back in this, back when I was at school, sixties and seventies, there was no there was no English people around, and so any poor kid that came to school who was English got absolute dogs abuse from from generally most people, and and just had to hide out the road. It must have been horrible for them, because we were brought up, basically we were brought up to dislike England. I mean that's the truth of the matter. So there you go. There we go. I like a bit of. Casual xenophobia in the Scottish school system. Uh, finally, Stevie, are you getting Christmas presents for anyone on <laughs> ESPN FC? Am I getting anybody anything? Yes. What well, that Dan, you know how kind good. and how generous I am. Yeah. Had had I been able to go to ESPN in Bristol at any time, I would have. I would have. I would have filled a veritable uh, stagecoach with presents for everybody but unfortunately we're not allowed to go there so I can't do it but you, you to be fair you always used to give um, all the makeup girls uh, chocolates didn't you all British chocolates which was quite it's the only thing I've only presents I didn't give to anyone <laughs> well it's just I told you I'm a kind hearted warm generous person why would I not give uh, give the girls some chocolates yeah, I don't know why would you have a stagecoach as well <laughs> what's that going to do with anything <laughs> I didn't say stagecoach. <laughs> you said a veritable stagecoach full of presents. Yes. Did I? <laughs> yes, yes, you did. Good, oh, right. Minutes, yeah. Right, we'll leave you to your scratching, Stevie. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Enjoy your meeting. Your battery made it, I Ian. Can... Fantastic. Oh, oh, stop that's it. Lovely. Oh, Stevie, you're making an outage. Uh, you, know you get it right on the spot. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that's disgusting. Oh. <laughs>
Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.